Welcome to the NDIS Property Australia podcast. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hi, everyone. Uh, Today, uh, we're with Phil from LifeBright. Um, LifeBright is an organization um, down the coast at Rabina um, who they offer MTAs um, and SDA accommodation for NDIS participants. Uh, could you just uh, introduce yourself, Phil, and just tell us just a little bit more about yourself and your organisation? Sure, Matt. Um, LifeBright is part of our group, um, and it's a subsidiary of the Odyssey Health Group, which is uh, um, our primary business, and really that's based around accommodation for um, different categories of people um, and providing care for them. Uh, in LifeBright, it's for our, our people in the community that have got disabilities, obviously, um, and LifeBright is registered to supply accommodation to uh, for SDA to high physical support, and we also have on site our own 24-7 care team. So um, we always welcome our residents to, to come and live with us with their own care team should they want to, um, and we often... Um, fill in the gaps where that care team is not able to handle something, for example, an overnight stay or or whatever. So we're quite a, um, a we're, we're a strong service based uh, supplier of accommodation that also fills in the gaps with care as people need it. Awesome, awesome, no worries. Um, so how long have you guys been around for? Well, I've been doing this now for twenty years, but with the specialist disability accommodation, um, I've been doing that since two thousand and five, well before the NDIS um, was invented, uh, where I would have elderly couples that would live with us who would have a disabled child, and you know they would talk to me and say, "Look, is there any chance that our son or daughter can live with us?" And, and I can assure you that when you're sitting across the table from a family, it's really hard to split them up. So we learned how to, to deal with and handle accommodation for um, for younger people with disabilities um, ages ago. So we've been practising that since 2005, but Odyssey and, and LifeBright itself uh, is an iteration of, of uh, or, or the culmination of all of those years. Um, and we've been open here at Rabina since July 2020. Tried. Oh, excellent. Yeah, because I actually went down, um, it was uh, probably a month or two ago to visit uh, your uh, the location at uh, Rabina. Yeah. And I was just amazed at um, just the extent of the service provided. Um, obviously, it's all modern facilities, but there's just a, a plethora of just, um, I suppose, opportunities to, uh, I guess, Firstly, obviously, um, facilitating a lifestyle um, to suit the um, participants' needs, but there's also kind of um, ways in which they can kind of get involved with each other and get involved in the community. Um, And I just found that to be incredible uh, when I went down there. Yeah, look, I appreciate you saying that because um, it's just the way we do it. So I've I've always taken that for granted. But um, to pause on it for a moment, yeah, Yeah. there, there there are some unique things about us. So as you say, like our... Our uh, residents, we have uh, 18 apartments um, for our residents with, with disabilities, um, you know, and, the, and there is a, a dedicated reception to that area. There is, uh, um, you know, uh, dedicated security. Uh, there's, you know, there's a, a like-minded, like-mindedness amongst all the residents and, and, and they are involved and, and invited to participate in the whole community. So, so our LifeBright community is sort of like a, like a hood within the neighbourhood and, uh, for example, we have a lifestyle program where there's stuff going on all the time and our, our residents in LifeBright are more than welcome to attend that. Um, so there is there are activities happening all day, um, all week, all year. And, and uh, you know, I might have mentioned to you when you were down on one of the team that, you know, most people say sort of like, sort of like living on a, a stationary cruise ship, there's always something to do. Um, yep. And, yep. and like on a, a cruise ship, there's a full care team. So if, if I need it or if something comes up that's an emergency, um, you've got me covered. So I think what, 
we are what you would call a, a two-horned unicorn. Yeah. Uh, so I guess uh, it, for someone, because a lot of uh, obviously um, uh, STA and MTA are kind of the cousin of SDA, which is, you know, what a, a lot of people who we work with are kind of in the SDA market. Could you yeah. just, um, and they might not know, um, you know, it, situations where, uh, you know, the participant might be waiting uh, to move into an SDA home. Yeah. And where are they at that stage? Because um, obviously, um, your organization, you know, they can stay up to 90 days. Yes. 90 days, is that right? Yeah, that's right. And that, and we sort of, we are finding that, um, you know, that, that fulfills a need um, out there because there are lots of people Absolutely. that need short-term accommodation, you know, a couple of weeks because they're stuck or they, they, they need a break. But in particular, MTA, medium-term accommodation, um, you know, there's lots of people that are uh, awaiting um, for their final home to be completed. And they go, well, what do I do? Uh, well, you come and live with us for three months and we can sort of sort out all your stuff. You can live with us. You've got a beautiful place to live. We can handle your care if your care team can't get here or aren't available until you move into your permanent accommodation. So we're finding there's quite a need out there for uh, MTA and, and SDA and we're quite happy to fill that niche. Yep, excellent. Yeah, so uh, just so the listeners who might not know, uh, uh, what's what's STA and MTA? Could you just give us just a brief description of kind of the differences there and what they mean? Sure. Well, you know, my version of STA, it's short-term accommodation. It's where people um, might need a respite. They might need a break and they go, look, you know, my plan covers uh, me to be able to stay somewhere for a couple of weeks um, and then, you know, and, it, and it's all charged out at the at the scheduled rate, scheduled rate um, and they come and stay with us for a short-term break. Um, we call it kind of staycation. Um, yep. MTA is, is medium-term accommodation. So uh, as I was saying before, somebody has got their new place being built and they're going to move into it, say, in three months' time. Um, their, their arrangements where they are now have changed and they need somewhere for 90 days as sort of like a, a bridging accommodation, a bridging care um, availability or, or package to see them through that period of time where they are moving from one environment to another. So uh, commonly, uh, it's a problem for people. And we've learnt and we've got three apartments that we, we sort of keep for that and one that we keep for SD, for short-term accommodation um, to sort of fill that, that niche. So um, we cover people that need a short-term fix or a medium term fix, and people, you know, obviously do want to live here permanently as well. Um, but this industry, you know, needs to work together. So we don't try and say to somebody, "Look, if you're here for medium term accommodation, um, then it, it's it's medium term. We understand that, and and we'll try and work around when your new home is ready to be able to accommodate you um, to move across when that is is required. So if you get to sixty days and your new place is done. Good, oh, no problem, and away you go. Because one of the problems, Matt, that people have is yep. that if they find medium-term accommodation, they might find something that's really not nice and they don't want it, and they might go, well, look, you know, how about I have my medium-term accommodation down on the Gold Coast and I'm going to live in, in Brisbane permanently at some point, but, geez, it would be nice to be down there. But then they go, Absolutely. Well, well, then they go, well, how, how does my care team get down there? Well, if it's medium-term accommodation, we can look after the care because we have 24-7 care on site um, and everybody can have a little bit of a break. So when they move into their new place in Brisbane, their care team have had a little bit of a break as well and then they can come back and still look after them. So we aim to sort of fit in with everybody and so far so good. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, so I suppose going on that point, um, it does sound as if it's very dynamic in, in the ways in which it can be adaptive to surround, uh, to kind of... Eat. Uh, integrate a participant's current position and uh -huh. how and what they might need um, in the short term as they're transitioning between you know locations or different funding options etc. Yeah. Um, so in terms of uh, the, uh, the the place at Rabina, could you just uh, kind of break down what sort of facilities there are there? Um, I went to see it the other day, um, which was excellent. Um, but yeah, could you just kind of um, run us through what's available um, for participants, um, what they can get involved in, um, that sort of thing? Sure. Okay. Well, in the built form itself, like I said, it's like a neighbourhood within the neighbourhood. Um, the mm -hmm. apartments are uh, designed uh, to handle people up to high physical support. 
Um, we have a couple of apartments that have hoists built in already to be able to assist people to get from their um, their bed across into the bathroom, for example. The apartments themselves are extremely modern. Uh, they range in size from about 75 square metres to about 90 square metres. They're all two-bedroom, albeit that usually for short-term accommodation or medium-term accommodation, usually just one person. But it does give you a place that you can stick all your gear. You can put your... Um, yeah, you know, yeah. your wheelchair or whatever the case might be. Or if you've got a family member or a mate that's going to come and stay for the weekend, um, there's a place where they've got a bed that doesn't interfere with you. So the finishes are really nice, uh, as you would have seen. Absolutely, yeah. So when I, yeah, when I, I was blown away by it, honestly, because um, it was not only that it was functional um, and accessible in the ways in which kind of a, a specialist disability um, accommodation kind of needs to be. Hmm. Um, it was, it presented so well and the ways in which it kind of uh, was ergonomic. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but it yeah. kind of fit in well with the surrounds. And um, I love that personally. I, I thought that was great. Yeah. Well, when we were doing the designs, actually, we, 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 we inquired to find out who was the, uh, the toughest certifier um, for um, SDA accommodation, and that's a fellow by the name of um, uh, Francis Lenny. You probably know Francis. And uh, Francis yeah. is, uh, you know, he has cerebral palsy and he's very aware of what is required. And I can assure you that Francis measured everything. So if if the, the gaps, of the, the, the widths of the hallway was was a millimetre too, too short or too narrow, he would not certify it. So he went over everything with yeah. fine-tooth yeah. comb. So... We are really absolutely 100% certain that it's as uh, is, is, is good as it can be um, unless something else comes up that has not been looked at or seen. So currently, um, yeah, it's, it was, it was you know, really well scrutinised to deliver what it is. So in addition to that, uh, each apartment has a balcony. Um, we have some external areas, uh, we have a barbecue area with, uh, you know, sun uh, hood over the top but in our community we have a, a restaurant so you know there's breakfast yep. uh, morning tea three course lunch if you want it uh and dinner and we do um home delivery so you know somebody just jumps on their phone rings through to the kitchen like you do in a hotel and um, mm-hmm. somebody will deliver dinner in a brown paper bag um on site we have the 24 7 care team and that's been a real plus for most people, including a registered nurse, because, you know, what normally happens, Matt, if somebody has a, an episode, an issue, um, usually a, a carer will go up, off to hospital, you go, and nobody likes that. Ne- neither does the hospital. No way, yeah. You know, you, yep. people don't want to do that if it's something that needs an RN, a registered nurse, but you don't have to go to hospital. So um, we can prevent all of that because our registered nurses deal with that um, issue. And it's very rare that we see an ambulance come on site. So we have that. We have lifestyle coordinators across the whole community, um, which, you know, we, we build a, an annual monthly, weekly calendar of all sorts of stuff uh, that people are, uh, are welcome to participate in. Some of it's free if it's in-house. Um, if it's an excursion or something like that, people just pay for the cost of the excursion. We don't charge a margin on any of that. Um, so it's not just the, the, the built form. Um, it's actually, it's a community. There's stuff going on all the time um, awesome, that people yeah. can participate in or not. If you're a bookworm, you don't have to do anything. But if you do want to, you know, get involved and make new friends and do stuff, if your life has been somewhat sedentary or isolated, um, we provide that it's environment. It's a perfect community for that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. No worries. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I also noticed... Um, yeah, was, there was so many, so many different um, kind of rooms and uh, facilities there um, in terms of entertainment and just both getting involved, but then also being able to do your own thing. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, also the opportunity for someone to, you know, stay there who's maybe a relative or a friend. Yep. Um, and I, another point I wanted to touch on, um, which you mentioned earlier, was just um, how how the uh, person who certified it um, had uh, cerebral palsy. Yes, um, and how it's so important, uh, particularly in these sort of facilities, um, to make sure. Um, I was speaking to someone else about this the other day um, that it's kind of it comes from a place of experience mm-hmm. and understanding the actual needs of participants, because there can be, you know. Uh, in terms of builders and um, participants, support coordinators, providers, 
there can be a discrepancy between information and the the needs, um, you know, between uh, yeah the, the needs between participants and what builders think that they need. And so it's so important to get that get that I, I suppose be on the same page when it comes to those those sort of needs. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, look, it's very valid. Um, so, I mean, we have a lot of experience anyway with actually dealing with people with disabilities, not so much experience with dealing with the the NDIS and the NDIA, you know, because as I said, our position where we look after people with and do look after people with disabilities has come from need. It hasn't really come from, uh, oh, look, here's an opportunity. It, it, it yeah. hasn't come from yeah. that position. It's come from, okay, we've got people that have got disabled kids who are living with us. We better work it out. It came from that. So um, what that means is that, we, you know, you talk to a lot of individuals and then you go, all right, well, you know, what do you learn from, the, from you know, the last 15 years? And you learn that, you know, people with disabilities are just the same as people without disabilities in terms of their desire for independence and for, um, you know, all the things that are surrounding, you know, the term dignity that are, that are required and so on. So the only way you can get that right is to go, all right, well, let's find the right people to be sure that we're barking up the right tree. So when you find a guy like Francis um, mm. and he goes, okay, you've considered 95% of things, but here's the 5% of things you haven't considered. Um, and if you listen to that, I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's That's so valuable. It, it, yeah. it is. And I mean, it's, it's not inexpensive, believe me, um, but it's just dumb to not do the job properly and there's other things too like uh, Brent Woolgar we, we utilize Brent from uh, DSC and we go on to Brent okay fine with the built form we get that but should we build a separate reception for our people with disabilities in our community to give them a sense of self and a sense of um, you know this is my cohort um, this is my place you know to have my own security system my own parking all that sort of stuff should we do that within the community and his response was well, of course, because just like you have in every community, there are, there are different facets to it and each one needs to be respected equally. So that's why we don't have a common reception, for example. We have separate receptions because you need to respect the fact that that part of the community wants to have its own identity. And it's working really well because, you know, the camaraderie and, and the uh, social um, sharing uh, that we're getting in Life Bright is really good. I mean, it's, it's great great to see you know so it's it's working well and as you were saying before our general neighborhood you know we've got a library we've got the restaurant we've got all the coffee shop we've got all that sort of stuff and um sure everybody shares that but it's still nice to go home to your place that's designed for you the way that it should be absolutely absolutely so uh what sorts of participants are mostly uh there at the moment or have been in the past um just to give our listeners kind of an idea Look, mostly uh, participants that, that are high physical support. And, and the reason for that is, is like I was saying, we're, we're, we're already a unicorn because we satisfy, I think, mostly um, everything and, and we tick all the boxes. So, so people with high, high physical support requirements, it's really hard for them to find a medium-term uh, accommodation location because you can't tick all the boxes. Not many people can. Most people either supply the SIL, the Supported Independent Living Care, or the accommodation, the SDA. Well, we do both. Um, so it's easier for people that don't have relatively high care needs to find alternatives. Really hard for people that have got high care needs to find Absolutely. a place that works for them. So that's who we're attracting because it's the hardest part of the market and we're one of the few people, if not the only one, um, that can cater for the needs. Yep, yep, absolutely, yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, so I suppose uh, moving forward, uh, what... What are the goals of LifeBright moving um, moving into the future? Well, look, uh, at our campus in Rabina, we've got three buildings at the minute. Um, we've got uh, Malibu, we've got Ipanema, and we've got Waikiki, um, and we have 18 um, uh, SDA uh, apartments in, uh, in Ipanema, as I said, in its own neighbourhood. Um, we're going to be embarking on uh, our next building will be uh, Biarritz, and that's... Uh, mm -hmm going to have a medical centre in it, a, uh, a, um, a physio business because the physios are here now five days a week anyway. Um, we're putting a, a pretty large gym in there because the residents and the, um, and the staff use it and the little gym we've got now is not, not big enough 
and everybody kind of gets on pretty well. So we're going to have it like a community gym, not just uh, one for the residents or one for the staff. Uh, and then we're putting another floor, another level above the medical centre because it makes sense, uh, again, for um, our specialist disability accommodation. So there'll be another 10 apartments there. And then there'll be some more of our regular Odyssey apartments uh, for retirees and older people um, above that. So that's happening there. We also have a nice site on Chevron Island um, that we're um, – uh, finalising the the actual plans uh, on, and we'll have more accommodation there. And and we are looking at another site, Bayside, up in in Brisbane. So our plan is to just keep on doing what we're doing, really. And and those um, communities will be um, minimum standard of what we're doing here, if not better, because as time goes by, there's new stuff. And whenever there's new stuff, we're always going to try it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I suppose um, how how can because our, our goal of this uh, particular podcast is to raise awareness um, of uh, kind of SDA and MTA and what Life Bright's doing. Yeah. Um, how, can we, how can we support your organisation? Um, oh, in terms of- look, as I said, you know, we've come at it from the point of view of the need, not so much from how to milk the system. And mm-hmm. I don't mean that in a negative way. We're sort of a little bit not uh, as understanding on how to reach people to, to let them know um, that we are here. Um, we've just done it because we, we need to and we're sort of bobbling along a little bit. So where we need help is for people to spread the word that there is this place in Rabina that's kind of unique and if you have a short-term or a medium-term need in particular, um, give them a call, go on their website, have a look, uh, and it's probably going to answer all the things that you need ticked that you haven't been able to find so the help we could do with is just people knowing that we're here and talking about it no worries well um i suppose uh if 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 there was someone out there who's who has um you know uh funding how would they would they uh or their care or whatnot would they just get into contact with you um what would what would be the best details to get in contact with you yeah, look, if you just um, if you just gave us a call, uh, which you can get the number on the on the website, um, or you can email me direct, which is phil p h i l at o h g dot net dot au, and then I'll connect you to our team, and it's a fairly comprehensive team. We have eighty five staff here at this campus, so um, Petra or uh, Rebecca would get back in touch after I've had a a look at it and then run through the process. And, you know, it's the, it's the standard process really where we just need to see the documentation, understand the need, make sure the person's got the funding in place to be able to help them for that short or medium term accommodation. Um, We turn that around pretty quick and we've had people move in as quick as a, as a week. So it's pretty straightforward. So if you just email or if you look up LifeBright on uh, Google, or if you look up Odyssey Rabina on Google, um, you'll find us. No worries. Um, well, thanks so much for um, coming on board with us today and just um, sharing a little bit about um, LifeBright and what you guys are doing. It was such a it was such a good experience for me to be able to actually go down there and visit it because I do believe it's very state of the art, especially in this space. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Phil. It's a pleasure, Matt. Um, you know, and we really appreciate your help and any of the listeners out there that know somebody that needs what we do, um, we'd uh, really appreciate uh, hearing from them. Awesome. Um, Thanks for tuning in, everyone, to this podcast episode. Um, If you do want to find out more information, uh, Phil provided his details uh, before, but you can also contact us and we can um, refer you over over to LifeBright. We hope you enjoyed this episode please make sure that you are subscribed and following us so that you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this episode with those that can benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.